Hello, this tutorial that you're about to watch is part of a larger tutorial series called Teaching Zombies Adobe Illustrator, where I teach a zombie about Adobe Illustrator. If you want more details on the rest of the tutorials, there is a link down below in the description. This tutorial here is really kind of two sections. The first section is the basics of brushes. How do you actually make an art brush? If you already understand that and want to just skip ahead to the part where you make the comic inking brushes, go to the time that I have right here. I think that's pretty much everything you need to know. So if you like it, hit the like button. If you love it, go ahead and subscribe. I'm going to let zombie take it from here. <laughs> Hey zombie, welcome back. There's something I wanted to show you. You can make custom brushes in Adobe Illustrator. Remember how we learned all about lines when we were drawing that cage to take you to the vet? Good, good, you remember. I know you don't like them, but lines or strokes can be incredibly useful. We can take any of those lines and make custom brushes to fit those lines to make them look like pretty much anything we want to. Check this out, that arm we drew a couple lessons ago, I turned that into a brush. I thought you'd like that. But let's get rid of these arms and talk about how we can actually turn any shape that we have or a photo, really any kind of art that we have in Adobe Illustrator, we can turn into a custom brush. I start by selecting what I'd want to turn into a brush, which right now are just these shapes that we turned into an arm. I'm going to go up here to window and I'm going to scroll down to brushes because we're going to be using our brush palette to create some new brushes with. Makes sense. So let's open that up and here we have uh, our basic brush palette. Now since I've highlighted the artwork we're going to turn into the brush already, what I want to do is go up to these dashed lines in the upper right hand corner of our brush palette. I want to click on that and I want to create a new brush. It's going to give me several options here and we could do a lot of different things with brushes, but what I want is the one smack dab in the middle. This is our art brush. We could do a lot with this. So once I've selected that, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now we have a ton of options. First of all, I'm going to call this zombie arm, give it a name so I can keep track of it. And we have a whole bunch of settings here. If we take a look, we have this preview window and you'll notice that the arm is actually going backwards. It's going in a different direction than I want, to want it to face. But I can come up here and I can change that direction. For example, if I wanted this arm to go up, I'll click OK and I'll go ahead and draw an arm here so you can see what it, it does. That line goes up. If I make it short, it's narrow, right? It looks weird. That's not what I want, but you can do that. If I want to edit this hand, I can actually see it right here. This is the brush we're working with. I just double click it again and I can go back to my editing options. I actually want this to flow with the hand. So the finger that's pointing ends with the direction that my line has been drawn in. Now, ultimately, we're going to be making some custom brushes that look like the kind of brushes that you would see in a comic book or comic strip. But I want to explain how this works a little bit first. So right now we're stretching to fit the stroke length. You will see this radio button up here that does that, which means no matter how long we draw it, it is going to elongate that art to fit the length of that line. But we can scale proportionately. I'm going to go ahead and click OK and show you what that looks like. So I'm going to grab my brush tool and if I draw a really long line, I'm just gonna get a bigger arm. That arm is going to stay proportional. So if you don't want that arm to stretch, you could do that. Or I can, you know, turn that corner, kind of have that arching thing, and it's going to warp in proportion, kind of. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these, because I just wanted to show how that proportion worked. I'm gonna go ahead and double click on that arm again. And there's this other really cool thing you can do. This particular arm actually lends itself to this, stretch between the guides. I'm going to go ahead and click that. And you'll see what happens in my preview windows is I have these dotted black lines appear around my arm. Now what these dotted black lines are showing me is what part is going to be stretched. So I might not want the hand to be stretched, so I can actually take this black line and put it there at the wrist. So this will appear no matter, uh, it won't stretch basically. Let me draw that really quick to show you. So the hand stays in proportion. Now the bone didn't stay in proportion, so I can go back and I can come in here and I can adjust this to kind of above that cut there. I'm gonna click OK and now when I draw a really long line, I still have my stump over here, I still have my arm over here. The only thing that is stretched is that middle part. So let me draw a long swirly line here and let's see, let's, let's change this to maybe be 0.25 points and now we can see we have a really long arm. Now let me zoom out a bit and I'm going to get rid of 
all of this extra stuff and over here on the side you'll see that I have a nice portrait of you that I drew. Check that out. <laughs> what do you mean it doesn't look like you? It looks just like you. It's using the same artwork. When I drew these lines I was just using the default lines that are available in Adobe Illustrator. They're all the same weight. They don't taper or change. They're just they're just kind of boring. So let's make some interesting lines. Let's make some interesting brushes that we can work with. Now you'll notice a lot of comic brushes will actually taper. If you think about using a fountain pen or a brush that you're painting with, that brush will taper as you lift it off the page and comic creators use this to great effect. We also see a lot of line weights and variants when comic creators are drawing ink lines. And so that's kind of the effect that we wanna go for. And so when I create a brush out of a shape, I'll just go ahead and draw a shape here, and then I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna swap the inside and outside color so that it's a, uh, a nice solid color. If I turned this into a brush, it would have a flat end. But I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit, and I'm gonna add some uh, extra points, actually just kind of one in the middle, and I'm uh, gonna taper this brush like this. So I like to think of this as like the end of my ink line, and it doesn't have to be perfect. And and also, I want it to look kind of organic, so I don't want it to look like, you know, a hard edge. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my pen tool to kind of come in here and make this arced line to make it look like a more natural end point to that line there. And then I could come in here and I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom because, you know, when you lay your pen down, you're gonna get a different effect as well. So let me pull this out. You know, when I think when you lay your pen down, you're getting less of that, but you're still getting kind of a, a beginning to the edge of that ink line. So maybe the beginning of my ink line uh, looks something like that. So let me zoom out and there we go. This, this could be an ink mark that you might leave on your page. Now we might want a, a more gradual taper as well. So what I've just done is I have duplicated that line and I'm gonna come in here because what I want is a variety of different ink strokes. So maybe I kind of come in here and I can adjust these a little bit, kind of give that nice round smooth edge. Maybe I come in here, I adjust that a little bit, kind of get that kind of edge going on. So this is a different stroke. I'm gonna duplicate it one more time and come in here and uh, make these kind of blunt edges, both of them. And there we go. So, so we have this variety of brushes that we're gonna be using. First of all, I, I want them all to be thinner. I can always make them thicker by changing the weight, uh, but if you start thick, it could be hard to go down. You're gonna have to hand enter it. Whereas if you start thinner, you can always go bigger. It's easier to go go bigger, you, you can go smaller. But anyway, I, I kind of like to do that. Also, when I make them thinner, you can kind of see that this is this is kind of that sharp pointed line, you know, like a quickly drawn line. Uh, this is kind of just a slowly drawn standard line. So, so we do have some line variation going on here. So I'm just gonna grab the first one. I'm gonna go up to my brush palette. I'm gonna create new brush. I'm gonna select art brush. I'm gonna click okay. Uh, I want my brush to go upward. Um, part of the reason why is the, the bottom has kind of that flatter edge. The end of your brush stroke is going to have more of that taper to it and that's what I'm going for. I, I mind stretch to fit stroke length so I'm good there. Uh, I'm going to call this comic brush one and I'm going to go ahead and copy that because I'm going to call the next one cop comic brush two. So I select the next one, come up here, new brush, Art brush, okay. Gonna change my direction once again. Gonna rename it comic brush two. Gonna go ahead and click okay. And of course, we're gonna select the third one. Um, then I'm gonna come up here to my brush palette again. New brush, make sure I select art brush, okay. Stretch, yep, we're good there. Gotta change the direction, let me name it first. There we go, we change our direction. And there we go, down here in our brush palette, we have three really nice comic inking brushes. Well, I'm glad you like them. So why don't we apply them and get this effect going the way we want it to go. So this is your head. And 
First of all, uh, a lot of times I like to make the outside lines thicker than the inside lines. Uh, so all I have to do is select a line that I like, and then I can go and figure out, okay, what, which one of these brushes that I just created would work best for this. So I'll just select one of them, and there we go. That's a nice uh, thicker line. I can come in here. I can grab kind of that blunt line again. Uh, I can grab these hairs, and these hairs are um, maybe those I want to taper more. So maybe I grab that, that taper brush so that they come to more of a tapered point. I'll grab these three hairs and do the same exact thing, and those are also coming to a tapered point. Grab these guys down here, set those to a tapered point. Uh, now some of these are a little too thick, like these little lines, they're drawing a little too much attention to themselves, so I'm just gonna actually come in here. I'm gonna uh, knock down my, my stroke weight, so I already have my stroke palette open on the right hand side. If you don't, you can open it by going to the window drop down and finding stroke. Uh, but mine is open, so I'm gonna grab 0.5, shrink it down. I might do that with uh, all the hair actually, because the hair is not that prominent, it's just an, an extra feature here. So there we go, that's looking good. I can start to grab other elements and do similar things uh, and start adding some different brush weights to these. Now some of these closed items you're gonna find this sort of thing happening to and you might not want this effect where the brush ends and the other brush begins. So it's totally fine. I always have my basic line tool here. If I have a closed shape and I don't want to see the brush lines, that's cool. But I will go in here and I'll adjust the width so it kind of matches what I'm going for. I have the same effect going on with this eyebrow, so I'm just going to use my, uh, my basic line there. So I tend to use a mix of the basic lines and my custom brush lines as well while I'm drawing. So you get the idea. I'm going to grab some of these, this outside brain line. I want that to be nice and thick. Uh, I'm going to use like my less exciting brush for that. Uh, same thing with this one, my less exciting brush that I created. These inside brain matter lines, these are going to be nice and thin, and I also want them to taper well. So I'm going to just select all of those at once so I can just quickly go through them, uh, do multiple lines at a time. Then I'm going to grab those. I'm going to go back to my strokes, and these I'm going to knock way down to like 0.25 as well because those are just you know, additional detail. Actually, that's probably too much. So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna select them again, and maybe I'll go 0.5, because I, I want them to be a little bit more noticeable there. So there is some trial and error with this, but you're getting the general idea. This eye is good with, you know, a standard stroke on it. Um, so I'm gonna grab those, and just put a standard stroke on those. Keep that there, maybe make it two. I might grab this particular line and, and kind of angle that a little bit. I am going to knock down the size to 0.5. This mouth is definitely going to be one of these slashing lines. Uh, I'd probably knock that down to uh, 0.75 to make it a little thinner. These little lines inside the ear, same thing. I want nice slashing lines in there. Going to knock those down to 0.5 so they're thinner than the outside lines. The inside nose lines, I might do the same thing with. I'm going to make those really small, though. Oof, yeah, that looks awful. Let's uh, knock those down. Um, I'm going to take the outside parts of the nose, and I'm going to change the weight of that. Actually, I think I'm going to zoom in so I grab the right part. Grab that. Grab that. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to make this two points. That might be too much. Let's zoom out. Actually, that looks fine. That looks good. I think I'm going to make the outside of these eyes a little bit bigger, maybe three points. So there is some trial and error to some of this. Uh, like this line, for example, that needs to be... I'm going to add one of those, but I'm going to make it thinner. 0.5 for that one as well. So you're seeing this starting to come together and starting to see how all this kind of fits together. It's just a matter of getting all these to work. So there you go. We have kind of created a more realistic looking, you know, vector ink lines just by coming in and making our own brushes. I'm going to go ahead and highlight these outside lines one last time. And I, I really want these lines to uh, be thicker because they are, you know, the outlining of the head. So there we go. Now, some things are going to happen when you use these brushes uh, that, that just don't quite look right. And, and that's okay. 
For example, one thing that I think looks really weird now that I've seen it is that this line that makes up the top of his head, it kind of comes in here like this, and it's just as thick. I don't want this inside line that's hit the edge of his brain hole to, to be like that. So I can always come in here with my add shape tool, and I can separate one line from the other. So I can come in here, I'll add a line, I'll add another point in between those two points, and I'll just hit delete, and now those are two separate points which allow me to come into this line and knock this back down to like 0.75, which is kind of what I want. Now the one thing you will notice with these is sometimes uh, you will get some odd shapes and some little areas that you need to clean up, and that's pretty normal. Um, oftentimes with these brush tools, I will come in after the fact. In fact, this is, this is a little bonus here. Let me duplicate this so I don't destroy my line work. I'm gonna move him upward gonna move this down actually I'll, I'll uh, move this keep my line work alive I'll just move it off the canvas because what I'm about to do is I'm about to destroy my line work um, so I want to come in here to these details that look strange to me like this rounded edge and this extra space here that that just looks sloppy to me I want to clean those things up and so oftentimes in order to clean those up after I'm kind of done with the major ink work, which has gone pretty quickly, I'll highlight the whole thing, I'll come up to object, and I'll go down to path, and I will choose, whoops, I got off path, I will choose outline strokes. Now what this is gonna take do is it's gonna take all of my lines, and when I choose it, it has just made outlines of all of those shapes for me. So these are no longer lines, this is now one shape. Uh, so oftentimes I will come in here with my pen tool uh, that we learned about a couple lessons ago, and I'm just going to come in here and clean stuff up. Just add some little details to, to make that better. And I'm not cleaning as much as I might normally clean because I, I don't want to waste too much of your time watching me just fiddle with the pen tool. But this is all part of the process of, of making your work cleaner, making your work better. You know, maybe I want this line to come in here. I can just start adjusting things to, to just kind of clean things up, just make things look more uniform, make things flow a little better. You know, I might even come in here to where this line, you know, meets that line um, to make it look like a more standard stroke, something like this. There we go. Again, I'm being sloppy and I'm being a quick, but the whole idea is to give you this sense of this is how I would go about inking a character like this. And then I can always um, add additional lines and additional details. For example, I can select one of these strokes and say I want to add some detail lines to his eyebrows. I could just come in here with my brush tool, add some detail lines. Obviously, they're, they're kind of thick, but I can always kind of come in here, go back, and select a smaller stroke length and start adding details that way. So that is how I ink with custom brush tools.